Hello, my friends. God bless all of you in an abundant manner in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the biggest blessing which a person can receive from God is exactly his intellect, his mind, his reasoning, his reason to be opened, to comprehend the voice of God, to have ears to hear the voice of God, to understand the will of God for his life. See, you were baptized with the Holy Spirit, you were baptized with the Holy Spirit, who have the Holy, who have the mind of the Lord Jesus. It's obvious within this moment, this exact instance, you are enjoying the joy, the love for souls, the desire to take to other people that which God gave to you. Is it not true? This is the greatest joy of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. They have this assurance that the greatest will of their Lord Jesus is that other people as well receive this which they received. And that's what God wants to do. God wants to give to everyone the Holy Spirit. But unfortunately, not everybody wants. And there are those who don't even know. They don't want because they don't know. They haven't tasted. They have no idea of the will of God for their lives. So it's up to us, those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, to look after those Look for those who are thirsty and they don't know how to quench their thirst. Look at what the sacred scripture says. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. So Jesus had a big compassion, a great compassion. He has this great compassion. He remains having it to those who are weary and scattered like sheep with no shepherd do you know did you know that the sheep is the sweetest the humblest of animals the sheep has a very interesting characteristic if the shepherd is not there to guide them then they are lost easily, with much ease. The sheep has the perception, a big perception of the voice of the shepherd. So it follows its shepherd according to his voice, according to the voice of the shepherd. So if the shepherd does not speak, does not guide, does not give any guidance, so the sheep is lost and many die even of hunger for not having the direction, the guidance of the good shepherd. So Jesus speaks a lot about the shepherd and the sheep. In the Old and New Testament, he mentions in abundant manner. So Jesus went throughout the cities of those regions, those villages, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, announcing to people who would want the kingdom of God to reach them. So that is why Jesus received the Holy Spirit. Jesus received the Holy Spirit to fetch the lost sheep of Israel. The lost sheep. 
Remember when David says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Meaning, he, David, found himself included in the flock of the good shepherd, which is the Lord Jesus. And that is why he said, He will guide me to the green pastures. He leads me there. So the one who leads the sheep to the green pastures is the shepherd. So God gives us the spirit of the good shepherd, the spirit of Jesus, to go in search of these sheep who are lost. So you who know someone, you know at least one person who is a lost sheep. So it's up to you to go to this person and give that which you receive from the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. Not to take to them religion or any imposing factor, but to take the word of the kingdom of God. To take the spirit of the word of the kingdom of God. To take the name, the name of the Lord Jesus. The name of names to save these lost and scattered sheep. It's up to each of us to do this each and every day, every moment. So you certainly have loved ones, family members who are lost. They're lost in their sin. They're lost in their pleasures. They are lost in their visions. They are lost in their sins in their prostitutions, their corruptions, their lies, their deceit, and any form of prostitution, everything which is worthless. So, these people are lost. That is why they live in sin. They are in sin, live in sin, because they don't know what is holiness, what is to honor or what is honorable. They don't know the principles, the divine principles so these people are reaping that which they are planting because they are completely dry. So it is up to the true, to those who are truthfully baptized with the Holy Spirit to chase after these people, to go after them. So you who know a person who once was in faith as you are right now, but they're fallen, prostrate. They have no strength. Do what is possible, if possible, to bring this person to a service in the Universal Church where they certainly will receive prayer, guidance. Go in search of this person. Take a newspaper, a book, a book of faith. Take to this person something which will awaken this faith that they may also be saved and consequently be included in the flock of Jesus because the flock of Jesus are led to the green pastures, those who are part of the Good Shepherd, which is the Lord Jesus, certainly will eat of these pastures and drink from the still waters. But when a person does not form part of the flock of Jesus, it is pointless to say, the Lord is my shepherd. If they say, the Lord is my shepherd, but they're not in his flock, then it's pointless. And that is the reason why many people, unfortunately, they confess that the Lord is the good shepherd, is their shepherd, but they don't obey him. They don't obey the voice of the good shepherd. They obey the voice of the wolves who are dressed as shepherds throughout this world. So, put your faith in practice. Go after these people. Let's go after them. Every day we are here, giving a word of faith, removing and clearing out as much doubts as possible, giving people rational knowledge of faith which brings and produces life, life. 
when a person has this type of faith, this intelligent faith, they're not afraid. Those who are afraid are those who don't have faith. Faith eliminates fear. When a person is in faith, they fear nothing. Is it not true? You who receive the Holy Spirit and you're in faith, you're not afraid of anything. You're not afraid of death, of tomorrow. You're not afraid of the coronavirus. You're not afraid of the plagues. You're not afraid of the last days which precede, which anticipate the coming of Jesus. You're not afraid because you know that your shepherd is faithful and he will not leave you alone. You have this assurance inside of you. This is faith. It's practical. It's intelligent. It's faith based on the Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Not in the doctrine of my denomination, of the domination of anyone else. No. It's the Word, faith in the Word of the Good Shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. When we have this type of faith, we please God. Why? Because it's an intelligence faith. And God, as He is Spirit, He does not want praise or adoration. He does not want an expression of faith based on an emotion which is passed by, a feeling of the heart. He wants something spiritual because He is Spirit. So the praise and adoration, the service which we give to Him needs to be intelligent and rational and spiritual for us to be useful to His cause. So I would like to call those who received the Holy Spirit during these days of the fast of Daniel, you who received the Holy Spirit, you received the Holy Spirit, but you became cold over time because you stopped giving what you received to other people. When we have this faith, we don't stop to give. It's as Jesus said, He who drinks of the water which I give, this water will make in him a fountain a fountain which springs up for all of life, all eternity. It never ends. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, we become the fountain, the blessing to spring forth to the people who are tired, who are afflicted, those who are lost, those who are living hell in this world. So Jesus called us, Jesus baptized us for this. That is why I preach the gospel. That is why we preach the word of God. Because, see, the scripture says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he compliments by saying, the harvest is truly plentiful. The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Jesus. Came to reap, but reap who? To reap these people who he already chose to be saved, which he already called, but they're lost because we lack someone to reach them out to take and give to them the word of life, the word of the right direction, which will lead them to the green pastures. Excuse me. when we receive the Holy Spirit. In fact, when Jesus received the Holy Spirit, you see that Jesus was born by the work and the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit formed Jesus in the womb of Mary. 
But after his age of 30, he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Meaning, until the age of 30, Jesus did not do anything, absolutely nothing for God. He did not serve God. He was just being prepared. He was, we can say, growing in the grace of God. But when he received the Holy Spirit, from the moment which he received the Holy Spirit, as your case, my case, our case, when we receive the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit leads us immediately to the desert. And that is where we are tested and approved. No one is approved without being tested. Jesus was led to the desert, meaning there he had his baptism of fire. And certainly you will also have your baptism with fire. But the Holy Spirit is the one who led Jesus to the baptism of fire. There to the desert. So there in the desert he needed to face alone the devil. There were no angels to come and help him, no. The angels came to give him the bread from heaven. But until the moment that Jesus overcame Satan and in the word, he overcame with the word because he had the Holy Spirit. So he overcame. And the Holy Spirit comes exactly for this to give us the condition to overcome the devil, overcome the world, and overcome ourselves so that we may be useful to the cause of our Lord, our eternal Father, the Lord of the harvest. So from that baptism of fire, that test of fire onwards, Jesus started to preach repentance. And when he preaches about repentance, we are going to speak about this tomorrow. He preaches, he speaks to people who will hear the voice of God and if these people repent, then they were called and chosen to live in communion with God. But if a person did not repent, it's because they were not called. Better saying, they were called but not chosen. When a person receives repentance, God touches them. God gives the repentance, but He gives repentance to those who thirst for Him. Those who want to live a life differentiated from others. So, my friend, if you receive the Holy Spirit, if you receive the Holy Spirit, then it's time for you to have compassion of those who are living as you live, as you lived. Remember how you lived? Depression, sadness, empty, desiring to kill yourselves. You were suicidal. And look how you are today. How marvelous. There are many people who are living as you lived, as we lived. They're just waiting for us to come with the word, a word of faith, a word of encouragement, a word of repentance for them. All right? So tomorrow we will speak about repentance, which has nothing to do with remorse. We will speak more about this. God bless you all. And until tomorrow and I would like to say that tomorrow, Wednesday, we will have the Lord's Supper in all the universal churches of the kingdom of God. And you who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you will have the pleasure to sit at the table of the Lord Jesus with His Spirit inside of you and be able to enjoy, to be able to perceive the Lord's Supper. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.